Few plant families are more specialised in the sense of the degree to which they have moved away from the ancestral floral plan of the earliest flowering plants than the orchids. Now, the orchids belong to the same subphylum, the same major division of the flowering plants to which uh, tulips and uh, lilies belong. Uh, flowers in which it is the easiest thing in the world to recognise the different uh, floral parts like, like the petals and sepals, uh, stamens and carpels. Uh, but in the orchids, even though it's easy enough to recognise the periant, the petals and, and, and sepals, etc., if this is your first time, you will find it extremely difficult to find the stamens and carpels. And the reason for this is because in the course of orchid evolution, the stamens and carpels have fused together in the most complex way uh, to form a sort of column at the top of the flower. This is the spotted orchid, which is the commonest of all two dozen or so species of orchids that occur in Offaly. And if we take a look, take a look at an individual flower first. You can see the flowers are in a spike, numerous flowers up uh, the length of the spike. If we look at the individual flowers, uh, it's easy enough to recognise uh, the three sepals at the back, or the outer tepals, uh, and the, 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 the three petals, two of which form a sort of hood over that column that I spoke about. And you'll see the way the third petal uh, forms a very prominent landing platform for potential visitors, uh, making this uh, in, fact, in fact, making the family in general one of the most outstanding examples of, uh, of the zygomorphic floral pattern uh, in flowers. That's zygomorphic meaning bilaterally symmetrical, where the insect has to land on, uh, on a pre-chosen uh, labellum, so to speak. So, you, there's the landing platform, beautifully ornamented, and you can see that it leads to the entrance to a spur at the back, very prominent spur at the back, uh, uh, in which nectar would normally be stored, but surprisingly perhaps, uh, there's no nectar in the spur of the spotted orchid, although the visiting insects uh, do seem to derive some nutriment from the, the tissues of the, uh, of the spur. Now, there were originally six stamens and three stigmas, but these are fused together in the most complicated way to form this column at the top of the flower. Uh, you have to bend the hood petals out of the way, in fact, to see it uh, to see it clearly. But only one of the ancestral stamens is functional and produces pollen. Uh, it's just a single anther, uh, really, with two pollen-producing cells, which are these little caskets here at the top of the, of the top of the flower, and this overhang at the top of the column. And the pollen doesn't consist of discrete grains as it normally would in most flowers, but of grains bound together in two pollen masses, which are called pollinia. Now, of the three original stigmas, only one retains its original function, and it's this colourless U-shaped area uh, uh, just above the entrance to the spur. That's the stigma. Above the stigma, then, you can see a colourless projecting snout known as the rostellum. That is, or was originally, another stigma that has shaped, shifted to take on this new function. And because it's colourless, it doesn't stand out when you look at it from the front, but you can see its shape better uh, if you can manage to look at it from the side. The, the word rostellum in Latin, in fact, means the snout of a rodent, so it's a projecting little blob. Inside the rostellum are two sticky disks covered by membranous pouches, and these sticky disks are anchored by slender golden or silver threads to the pollinia.